Well, first of all, as I mentioned, algae is a food, but I also want you to know that algae was the first life on Earth three and a half billion years ago. So it predates us by 3.3 billion years. Um, and so it's been around for longer than anything else, and it's still here. It outlived uh, ice ages and uh, dinosaurs, so there's got to be something special about algae. And I also want you to know about that because algae is everywhere. It's in the oceans, and we're going to talk about the sea spiracy because algae is what feeds the fish and the whales and just about everything else. You're listening to the Live Life Longer show with Dan Voss, inspiring you to live longer through the cold, the hot, breathing, eating, and being nature. In this week's episode, my guest is Katherine Arnston, the founder and CEO of Energy Bits, an expert in algae nutrition, a wellness thought leader, an experienced entrepreneur, and sought-after speaker. Catherine holds an MBA from Western's Ivy School of Business, a BA in Geography and Economic Development from Queen's University, and is a board-certified health coach. Catherine has spent the last 10 years researching algae, writing papers, giving presentations, lecturing at conferences, and speaking on over 150 podcasts to explain the benefits of algae. Catherine's efforts have led to algae being better understood by educators, consumers, doctors, and wellness practitioners. Even the United Nations and NASA endorse algae as the most nutrient-dense food in the world and the possible answer to world hunger. Catherine, welcome to the Live Life Longer show. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, uh, I... Now that the movie Suspiracy is out where they uh, you know, document the damage being done to the oceans because of the commercial um, fishing, and in the movie, twice they point out that algae is the solution because of the high protein and the uh, better source of omega-3, I'm, I'm, I feel like a proud mother whose children have just won the Nobel Prize. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was a fascinating documentary. I had the chance to watch it about a week ago on Netflix. Um, the documentary Seaspiracy is what Catherine was talking about. And you, you and I were talking a little bit briefly before our recording here um, how, how eye-opening it was to see the fishing industry, um, how much we're depleting our, our natural resources in the ocean and uh, the biological life of, of the ocean. Um, and... It, while it's so daunting and kind of scary, very scary, um, to see what's being done t to the wildlife in the seas, there are some solutions. And, um, you know, as we were talking about, one of those solutions is to reduce or eliminate um, your, your intake of fish. And the other is uh, to look at something that you're very uh, proud of and passionate about, which is algae, and something we're going to be talking about today. Um, so I would love to... And, and we can get into that topic a little bit further around yes. uh, the documentary, Seaspiracy. Yes. yes. Um, but I would love to hear more because you have such a neat story of uh, coming into the health space. Um, you weren't necessarily, you know, talking about health and, and algae for your whole life. It's something relatively new, um, although it has been about 10 years. But I would love to hear your story of how you got started in algae and building a wellness brand uh, from the ground up. Yeah, sure. Well, um, as you mentioned, I have all this education that was business oriented. My MBA was in mm -hmm. international business and I was minding my own business with a, a corporate career, which was satisfying enough. <laughs> um, and then I'm actually Canadian, although I've lived in Boston 30 years. And then out of the blue, uh, 12 years ago, my younger sister developed breast cancer. Um, she's fine now, by the way. She's been ten, 10 years cancer free. So anyone who's listening, don't worry about that. But as she was preparing for her chemotherapy, her oncologist recommended she change her diet to an alkaline diet because they said it would help with her healing. <clears throat> now, they didn't tell her what an alkaline diet was or why it would be good for her. So when she got home from that appointment from her oncologist, the first call she made was to me because I'm her big sister and love her. And I'm also a very good researcher. So I probably should have pursued a scientific career. <laughs> so I said, hey, I have no idea what this alkaline diet stuff is, but I will find out and we will do this together. And I did find out. It was mostly a plant-based diet because of the phytonutrients and the chlorophyll that are found in plants that have been proven scientifically to build your immune system. And we're going to talk about that later on because algae is the most alkaline food in the world. So she did change her diet. She went through her chemo. She completely healed. 
In the process of doing research for her, I read about 10 books on plant-based nutrition. <clears throat> and now this was 12 years ago and nobody was talking about plant-based nutrition 12 years ago. And I thought, gosh, this is such powerful stuff. Somebody should tell the rest of America. And I thought, well, I have no idea how, I have no background, no, no science at all. Uh, but I'm going to find a way because I couldn't bear the thought of one more person getting unnecessarily sick because they were not aware of the uh, importance of vegetables uh, to maintain their immune health. So, uh, mm -hmm. so I gave up my 25-year corporate career. I thought, well, I need some sort of education. So I enrolled in a school called the School for in uh, in in Integrative Nutrition in New York City, and I went down there on weekends, um, and I graduated in July 2019, so quite a while ago. And then I thought, okay, now what? So I thought, okay, I'll, I've learned all this information. I will put a curriculum together, and I will teach plant-based nutrition to people. And I gave free workshops at corporations and hospitals trying to teach people about the importance of eating more veggies, which, of course, your mother has been telling you all your life, right? <laughs> and this is really what led me to my epiphany that led me to algae. And my epiphany is this, and I'm sure your, your community will appreciate this. Telling people to eat more vegetables isn't anything new. They've been hearing that from everybody, from their doctor to their mother forever. But what mm -hmm. I realized was that even though people want to eat more vegetables, there were too many obstacles. They either didn't live near a grocery store, or they were too heavy to carry home from the grocery store, or they took too long to clean, to cook, to eat. Their husbands wouldn't eat it. Their children wouldn't eat them. They were throwing a lot out. And I thought, okay, if I can't get people to eat more vegetables, I need to find a way to get the green nutrition that's in vegetables into them. But it has to be easy, fast, and efficient. So I went back to everything I'd found for my sister and nothing was working, nothing was working. And then boom, I got to algae. And that's when the miracle happened. Because mm -hmm. it turns out algae is the, uh, the most alkaline food in the world. It has the highest concentration of chlorophyll in the world. Chlorophyll is the pigment that makes plants green. And algae has a thousand times more chlorophyll than, than even Chinese greens. And we'll talk more wow. about the importance of chlorophyll. It turns out it has the highest concentration of protein in the world. It has three times the amount of protein as even steak. And this is why the United Nations in 1974 had a global conference that you can Google uh, on spirulina algae and declared it the answer to world hunger in 1974. Even Nassau endorses algae because it's the most nutrient dense food in the world. They say, I have a quote from Nassau that says, one gram of algae has the nutrition equal to a thousand grams of fruits and vegetables. One to a thousand. So nutrient dense. It's also the most studied food in the world. There are a hundred thousand studies, not five, not 50, not 500, not 5,000, a hundred thousand studies documenting all of the benefits we're going to talk about today in the NIH li library. And we're going to talk about spirulina and chlorella algae because they both have different benefits. So heavily scientifically documented, no questions, peer-reviewed studies. And on top of that, it's been used for centuries around the world, mm. most notably in Asia, where it's a multi-billion, that's with a B, billion dollar agricultural crop. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, algae is food. It is not a supplement. It is grown in fresh water. I'm showing you a picture mm. of, an al of a spirulina farm. And they've been taking it every day in, in Japan for 50 years. And by the way, in Japan, they have the best longevity, the lowest cancer rates, and great skin and hair. So it seemed to me that the only thing wrong with algae is that nobody knew about it, that the mm. quality had been poor because a lot of it came from China, <clears throat> and then the packaging was really weird. I'm gonna, this is, this is how they package it in Asia. And, mm. uh, and so they use the same packaging in America, which tells you nothing. It just looks really weird. So yeah. why would you, why would you buy that? It's been sold this way for 50 years in America, but it hasn't ever taken off. So as you're going to find see, out, spirit. I also see on their packaging, they have, does that say supplement on there? Uh, uh, yes, it does. And, and you often talk about supplement. how it's not a supplement, right? You, when you go to buy ours, we're probably the only company that does it properly. We have a nutrition panel because even the FDA says algae is a food crop. It's an ingredient yeah. in other foods. But what I reason I really, but I'm glad that you pointed that out. But the other thing I want you to see is like, why would you know to buy that? You know, spirulina mm -hmm. gives you energy. So I design all our packaging. I thought, well, let's make it pretty and call it energy bits. Um, it yeah. also builds your skin and hair. So I made a version that says beauty. So you know, you know, it's a cue. It's an you instantly know what it's going to do. 
And mm. chlorella, which we're going to talk about, we also sell them in boxes. Chlorella builds your immune system and helps you recover your health, recover from sports. It pulls out toxins. So I call ours recovery bits. So, mm. so 10 years ago, when I realized that it was scientifically documented, used safely for 50 years, um, uh, had all these amazing benefits, nutrient density, documented and endorsed by some of the world's best in, in, uh, international institutions. And uh, the only problem with algae was that nobody knew about it. So I decided 12 years ago I was going to devote the rest of my life to making algae easy for people to understand, safe and pure, and packaged in a way that um, made it uh, understandable. That was 12 years ago, um, <clears throat> and since then, I've had to teach myself the science of algae. I've had to teach myself biochemistry. I've had mm. to. I've read about 2,000 of those 100,000 papers that are in the NIH library because nobody was digging into the science about algae, um, <clears throat> and because it's complicated. <laughs> uh, right. So I've I pride myself on being able to read all these scientific documents now and reinterpret them into sound bites that help consumers and practitioners understand the benefits and how it works. Um, mm. So, um, so it's all, so it, that's what, how we've, we've, um, uh, we also do third party lab tests to prove that our algae has the nutrients in it that we're going to talk about and that it has no toxins because we are the only algae that's sold through doctors nationwide and they need mm. to know for sure that the product, the algae is toxin free and that it, it has all the same nutrients in it that we recommend. So, um, yeah. the, you know, the medical, these are functional medicine, chiropractors, um, biological dentists, nutritionists, you know, all professionals in the, in the holistic uh, health community. Sure. So we're very proud that um, we are able to provide them with a pure um, third party tested product and educational materials that explain to them, their patients and their team what algae mm -hmm. is and how it works. Yeah, the other thing that we haven't covered, I mean, you, you briefly mentioned the idea of nutrients and, you know, how much of our soil has been depleted of, of nutrients, which is in turn, you know, a, a made our, our food uh, lack the nutrients that we that we truly need. I was listening to um, Dr. Gundry who was on a podcast, uh, the Mind Valley podcast this morning, and they were talking about how... Uh, we knew in 19, I think it was 1937, they said, was when we first started realizing that the soil um, in our crops was was depleted of nutrients. And that was almost 100 years ago, right? That was before yeah. World War II. So it's only gotten worse since then. Yeah. Um, so I'm happy to hear that you're focusing on that, right? That that we need the the certain nutrients that we need in our um, in our in our diet and nutrition is what yeah. you're providing. In essence, well, <clears throat> well, a couple of funny things. I was just interviewed on Friday, two days ago or three days ago, by Dr. Gundry on his podcast. Oh, nice, very cool. <laughs> and funny. he and I see eye to eye on just about everything. Um, yeah. And on his podcast, I also pointed out that uh, algae is probably your last shot at getting the nutrients your body needs. And and mm. even the Centers for Disease Control say that 97% of chronic illnesses are related to, to lifestyle issues, which are basically lack of nutrients, uh, probably mm. in uh, lack of fitness. We can't do anything about the fitness, but we can certainly deal with the nutrients and also too many toxins. So as you're going to find yes. out, spirulina uh, algae uh, solves the fills all the gaps, nutritional gaps as you could ever need or, and, and mm -hmm. have. <clears throat> and chlorella algae pulls out toxins and builds your immune system. And I'm gonna, we're going to talk about them because spirulina is a blue-green algae. You see mm -hmm. that it's a darker color. And chlorella algae is a, a green algae because it only has one pigment in it. But sure. the reason why the soils are so bad, I mean, I, I didn't know about the 1937 that they identified it. But um, I do know that they certainly have identified it now. And the problem... Yeah has gotten worse because we what we do is monocrop we put the same crop in the in the same soil year after year after year and then we use glyphosate and all these terrible yep. toxic um, pesticides which just turns the the soil into dust there are no mm. nutrients and so that means there's no nutrition for the plants to pull up so that right. when you eat them you you get them so so we're eating fiber 
and we're getting calories, but we're not getting the nutrients. Uh, two other things I'd like to point out is that as a way to stem this problem, they've been growing vegetables in other countries. Well, here's the problem with that. Then they harvest them before they're fully ripened. So the nutrients don't make their way to the leaves or the fruit or wherever. So you're not getting them that way either. And then they get s stuck in warehouses for months. So they d d again deteriorate in, the, in terms of nutritional value. And the other thing is that they've realized that because of the ozone layer is being depleted, the, um, what's happening to the plants is that they actually have more sugar and fewer, mm. fewer nutrients and less protein. So again, we're all, even if you are eating organic, you just are not getting the same nutrition that your great grandparents did when they ate right. the same food. And, and the, the, the fourth issue is that you may, not, may or may not be aware of it, but all, especially with fruit, it, they have been crossbred to be sweeter. Apples yes. 50 years ago did not taste like the apples of today. The, t mm. the apples today are like candy. Um, so you have to really be careful because all of our health issues also start with inflammation. And inflammation mm. is driven by a combination of uh, too, many, uh, too much sugar in your body and also too many toxins. And we're going to address why the algae can um, deal with both of those issues. So I am so proud that algae gives you a thousand times more nutrition per ounce yes. or per gram than anything else. And that's not my assumption. That's that's from NASA themselves. So yeah, that's huge. I mean, you've, you've unpacked so much there that uh, it's eye opening, but it's um, some of it is, has been known for a while. But a lot of it is, as you have mentioned, people just are not aware of of algae as as a plant and the benefits that it has. Um, you mentioned two types of, of algae. I'd love to get to get into each of these a little bit further, uh, spirulina and chlorella. Um, maybe talk about each of those and you know the uses that we would have for each of those and you know what you would recommend uh, in terms of times of day for, for each of those types of algae that we would consume and, and even how much you recommend consuming. Perfect, perfect. Well, first of all, as I mentioned, algae is a food, but I also want you to know that algae was the first life on Earth three and a half billion years ago. So it predates us mm. by 3.3 billion years. Wow. Um, and so it's been around for longer than anything else, and it's still here. It outlived mm. uh, ice ages and uh, the dinosaurs, so there's got to be something special about algae. And I also want you to know about that because algae is everywhere. It's in the oceans, and we're going to talk about the sea spiracy because algae is what feeds the fish and the mm. whales and just about everything else. And it's also where they get their omega-3 from. But algae is everywhere. So, But the only algae you want to consume is the, um, well, there's two types of algae. One is called macroalgae, and the other one is microalgae. So macroalgae is basically seaweed, delts, kale, a kelp, it's that big stringy stuff that washes up on shore. Now, it does have nutritional value because it has a lot of fiber and it has iodine in it because it comes from the ocean. But it actually doesn't have much nutrition. But when I was talking to Dr. Gundry, he pointed out that he does recommend kelp noodles to a lot of his patients because they virtually have zero calories and, mm. but, uh, and they're great for holding some sauces and stuff. But it's just fiber. There's no nutrients. That's macroalgae. We're not talking about that today. We're talking about microalgae. And the reason why it's called microalgae is because it's microscopic in size. Um, mm. It's so tiny that about, you know, something like a hundred of these microalgae cells could fit on the head of a pin. And they're oh, everywhere. Cool. As I mentioned, the soils, the rivers, the lakes, your swimming pool, your aquarium. And that's why some people think it's pond scum. But we're going to, mm. the, the algae we're talking about today are the two strains of algae that are, are harvested as food crops it's they're called it's called growing them hydroponically grown in fresh water tomatoes are grown that way lettuce so it's it, again it's just a vegetable uh think of mm -hmm. it as a type of vegetable that's grown in fresh water okay so the two we're going to talk about are spirulina which is a blue green algae and chlorella which is a green algae uh, and the reason i just want to back up again the reason why i mentioned that algae is everywhere is like some people will go on the internet and they'll read about toxic blue green algae and they'll be panicking and it's like don't panic those are algae that are grown in the oceans they're not 
they're not consumable by you and us humans. So what we're talking about are carefully monitored, carefully grown, harvested uh, types of uh, veg of algae. Okay, spirulina. As I mentioned, it's a blue-green algae, and it's called a blue-green algae because it has two pigments in it, which make it darker than chlorella, which is the one over here, which is just chlorophyll. Um, mm -hmm. Now, spirulina is known to be an energizing algae and satisfies your hunger. That's why we called our um, spirulina energy beets, at least the first one. We, it also builds your skin and hair, which is why we have a second brand of spirulina called Beauty Bits. So spir why does it give you energy? Well, it has the highest concentration of protein in the world and uh, three times the amount of protein as steak. And all of that protein is already in amino acid form, which means your body doesn't have to work to get access to it. It gets absorbed mm. instantly. It has 18 of the 20 aminos, including all of the aminos your body cannot make. So it's called a complete protein. So in addition to all that rich protein that's about to give you energy, because when it turns into glucose, al spirulina also has all the B vitamins. If you've ever looked at an energy drink uh, can, you'll see it's loaded with B vitamins, all fake ones, of course. B vitamins convert the aminos into glucose, which give you energy. Spirulina also is loaded with iron. Iron is what carries oxygen in your blood, and that's what gives you um, more energy. Without oxygen, you can't survive. It uh, releases nitric oxide that opens up your blood vessels, so it's called a vasodilator. Uh, it's mm -hmm. loaded with omega-3 that we're going to talk a little bit about, about more, so it helps with your brain uh, functioning. It has boron, which helps with thought. And spirulina is technically a bacteria. It does not have a cellulose wall. And the reason why that's important, because all these rich nutrients, there's 40 vitamins and minerals um, in, uh, in the spirulina. All of this gets into your bloodstream almost instantly um, because mm. there's nothing, no cellulose wall for your body to break down. That's one of the reasons when we first started, we actually became a sports nutrition company because the athletes found out about us, the triathletes, the marathoners, Olympic athletes, uh, hockey players, uh, yep. because they found out it gave them concentrated focus and, and steady energy um, without upsetting their stomach, like all the those jars, uh, gels and bars and drinks do, which are loaded with sugar and carbs. So, um, so that's why it's very energizing. Now, when I talk about energy, we're not talking about lightning bolts from the sky. Uh, you might not even notice it at first because it's very quiet energy because it comes from nutrition, not from any caffeine, uh, sugar, or any other stimulant. So the best way to re describe how you will feel is you just feel fresh. That's it. Mm. Alert and fresh. Nothing more than that. Um, and if you are, um, uh, the other great thing about spirulina is that, uh, and both the algae are ketogenic, they're also paleo, they're also vegan, but on the ketogenic side, they do not contain any carbs. So, um, and they do not decrease your ketones or increase your glucose. So mm. you can have, the, if you're doing intermittent fasting, like a lot of people are, like I do, uh, you can have a handful of spirulina tablets. There's only one calorie per tablet, and mm -hmm. it will stave off your hunger for hours and okay. give you energy without interrupting your, um, your intermittent fasting. You're still in a fasted state. So m that's why most people take spirulina um, mm -hmm. and, uh, in the morning. Uh, to you know, because when you start your day, you want some energy. You're hungry. Uh, take it as a mid-morning snack. Put it in your smoothie, um, or and have it in the afternoon. We all have a drop around two or three o'clock. It's a it's a biological thing. Um, and then uh, and also definitely before you're doing any sports, running, mm. uh, working out, because it will give you steady energy. Now, the one downside I will say about spirulina is. Um, it doesn't taste very good. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's an acquired taste, I should say that. So <clears throat> no harm, no shame in swallowing them. Uh, I would mm -hmm. recommend at least two or three, probably four or five, five or 10 is better. Uh, for athletes, we recommend the full 20 or 30 tablets that you, because um, we, we sell them in single servings as well. Um, okay. There's 30 tablets in a single serving. You can get them on our website or on Amazon um, for your for optimal performance. And just to give you an idea, uh, our, we we work with five NHL teams, and they put 75 spirulina tablets in their smoothie before a game. Mm. And um, yeah. then we're going to talk about chlorella because then they put 75 of those in their smoothie after the game to pull out to pull out lactic acid. So there's no upper limit. It's just yeah. food. It's just a really concentrated f um, 
source of food with zero, virtually zero calories. I mean, Mother Nature, she just knocked it out of the park when she gave us spirulina. And I just want to show you yeah. this graphic. So one tablet, doesn't matter whether it's spirulina or chlorella, one tablet has the same nutrition as at least a half a pound of vegetables. And that's wow. a half a pound of vegetables that you didn't have to carry home from the grocery store, clean, cook, or eat. So it's mm. what I call efficient nutrition. <laughs> yeah. Real quick, Catherine, it's so funny you mentioned the NHL uh, players. I have a friend who who works with, I won't mention names here, um, but he works with an NHL player um, on some of his marketing stuff and social media. And I posted about your your products and on my on my Instagram, and my friend who works with this NHL player messaged me, you know, responded to that post and said, you know, so and so, uh, can you know, he takes he takes these all day long and, and loves the product. So wow, um, nice. Yeah, so obviously your your athlete customers are are enjoying it. Yeah, I think they like to think of it as their, our secret, uh, their secret weapon. But we do work with um, the Detroit Red Wings, uh, Edmonton mm -hmm. Oilers. Um, there's a team. I'm, I'm not the most sports oriented person, so I can't list them all off. But uh, and we had so many Olympic teams. Just while we're talking about sports, um, loving our product. That back during the Winter Olympics, uh, when it was held in Sochi, Russia, mm -hmm. I sent two of my team over to Russia, um, and. We had complete invitation and access to the U.S. Olympic Village and the Canadian, because I'm Canadian, um, because they love the product so much and they, they use it both for their training and for their um, performance. And they also, we're going to talk about the chlorella, which builds your immune system. They use yep. it not only to recover from sport, but to protect their health, because as you know, teams, well, they used to travel together. <laughs> uh, hopefully they will again soon. Mm -hmm. um, when they're traveling together, if one gets a cold, then it spreads quickly. But the athletes love our product. I'm very, and yeah. it's clean. You know, it's, it's, there's right. no, there's nothing else added to it. And we mm -hmm. have the documentation to prove it. So sure. thank you for sharing that. That's really yeah. neat. Yeah, <laughs> very cool. So you, um, you touched on spir spirulina. Maybe you'd like to touch a little bit more on chlorella and yes. some of the benefits yes. of that. So chlorella uh, is a uh, showed up on Earth a billion years after spirulina, which is the blue green algae. Chlorella wow. is a green algae, and it only has one pigment in it, which is chlorophyll. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, just like spirulina has the highest concentration of protein in the world, chlorella has the highest chlorophyll in the world. So, and again, remember, we're just not getting chlorophyll from our vegetables. Uh, chlorella even has 25 times more chlorophyll than liquid chlorophyll because chlorophyll, hmm. liquid chlorophyll comes from alfalfa. And I, and I tell people, well, why would you even take liquid chlorophyll when you get, can get 25 times more from the chlorella plus you get 60% protein and 40 other vitamins and minerals. So, uh, you know, chlorophyll is just the warm up act to chlorella algae. Um, now, sure. I'm gonna, there's a number of important things I want to share with you about the importance of chlorophyll. We'll deal with that first because, as I said, chlorella has the highest concentration. I'm going to show you a chart. This is the chemical composition of chlorophyll, and this mm -hmm. is the chemical composition of your hemoglobin, your red blood cells. Notice that they're virtually identical. That's because they are. There's only one difference. In, in your blood, you have an iron atom in the middle, and that's what carries oxygen. In chlorophyll, it's magnesium. Otherwise, they are identical. This is why chlorophyll has been used for centuries for helping people get healthy. In fact, even up in, uh, during World War II and up to then, when they would run out of blood for transfusions, they would give the injured liquid chlorophyll because they would heal just as fast as if they'd had a blood transfusion. So number one, chlorella, because it has the most chlorophyll of anything in the entire universe, builds your blood. And when mm. you have healthy blood, you're going to have a healthy liver, you're going to have healthy organs, you're going to have just a healthy body. So that's number one. Chlorophyll builds your blood and will help you be healthier. Chlorophyll also, um, it, because it's a fat-based pigment, heals your cell walls. Now you're probably aware that all of your health issues start at the cellular level and the mitochondria inside those cells. And the way to mm -hmm. keep your mitochondria happy and healthy is to give them what they need and take away what they don't. So what do they need? They need nutrients. And what don't they want? They don't want 
they don't want um, uh, um, ra free radicals and they don't want toxins. Mm -hmm. So uh, to keep your um, mitochondria happy and fed, <laughs> like kids, right? <laughs> you need to keep your cell walls healthy and you do that with healthy fats. So chlorophyll does that because it's a fat-based pigment. And the best analogy I've given to people is, you know, when you have dirty windows, you can't see out and sunlight mm -hmm. can't get in. So think of chlorophyll as window washers for your cell walls. And I'm going to show you uh, um, uh, another image. This is spirulina. Remember, it has two pigments in it, a blue one and a green one. The blue one is called phycocyanin. And, and see how it disperses beautifully through mm -hmm. the water? That's a mm -hmm. couple of tablets. That's because it's a water-based pigment. And we're going to talk about that later on because it's also been proven to stop the growth of to, uh, blood vessels to tumors. It's been proven to stop the uh, um, the absorption of the COVID virus into your cells, but it's mm -hmm. a water-based pigment. And then let's look at chlorophyll. See how it clumps? Because when you put it in water, fat and water don't mix. This wow. is this is you know I did this probably 50 times until I had the epiphany that chlorophyll and I doc I confirmed it on with science is a mm -hmm. fat-based pigment. So again, this is why it's so important for you to have this because it heals your cell walls. And when your cell walls are healthier, they will function properly and it's, it has that cleansing effect. So that's wow. number two about the importance of chlorophyll, which of course the highest concentration is in um, chlorella. So mm -hmm. the other um, amazing thing, and so when your cell walls are healthy, your blood is healthy, your body's gonna be healthier um, and it will build your immune system. So um, one, two more things about chlorella in your health and your wellness is that it has, remember I said spirulina is a, technically a bacteria and has no cellulose wall. Chlorella mm -hmm. is the opposite. Chlorella actually has the hardest cell wall in the entire plant kingdom. Why wow. is that important? Because that hard cell wall attaches to toxins, heavy metals, um, lactic acid, even alcohol and pulls them out. So um, we work with biological dentists who use it to pull out mercury after they've taken out fillings. Um, mm. The United Nations used it at Chernobyl uh, to pull out radiation. It was used at Fukushima after the radiation disaster there. Um, it pulls out aluminum if anyone's getting a vaccination. Um, so it will help prevent Alzheimer's. Chlorella algae is a chelator. It pulls out heavy metals and anything that shouldn't be in your body. It's known as an adaptogen. It kind of knows what to keep and what to take. So it keeps all the good minerals there and pulls out all the bad stuff. So that wow. keeps your cells and your mitochondria healthy and keeps you healthy, in particular your brain uh, as, as well. So it's yeah. pretty powerful. So that's, again, why we call our chlorella algae recovery bits, because it helps you recover mm. from your day, recover from toxins, recover from sports, because it identifies lactic acid as a toxin, recover yep. from drinking. It doesn't matter whether it's wine, beer, spirits. It identifies it. it your body converts it to toxins, and it, the chlorella will pull it out. Works every time. We've had people go to Vegas for their bachelorette parties and tell us we saved them because they were the only ones that took chlorella after drinking. <laughs> and you want to take it afterwards because it will immediately start pulling the, the alcohol out of your bloodstream. We're not, wow. we don't want to destroy your, your party. So don't take <laughs> it before, take it afterwards. Um, so you can have your party when it's ready to you know sober up and start taking the chlorella. Um, so, and also that hard cell wall has fiber in it. And if you've read anything uh, about your gut biome, you need to feed your, your bacteria in your gut fiber. And they mm -hmm. release what's called short chain fatty acids, which mm -hmm. help preserve the health of your gut. Uh, and by the way, build your uh, cells that defend you from invasion from viruses or any pathogens. And those uh, cells that your gut uh, create to protect you and to build your immune system um, are things like T cells, B cells, killer cells, white white blood cells, macrophages, all documentable in, uh, on the internet and you can go into any medical book. And what your but what the key is, however, to build those cells to defend you and to protect you, um, they need certain nutrients like mm -hmm. zinc and essential fatty acids and amino acids and B vitamins and vitamin A. And guess what? They're all in the algae, both of them, but most particularly yeah. 
the chlorella because chlorophyll is a key nutrient for supporting your immune system. So wow. um, chlorella also has great nutrients like vitamin K2, which pull out excess calcium from your blood vessels and your mm. soft tissue like your skin so you don't get wrinkles. I don't have really any wrinkles for my yeah, age. It's amazing. Great. Um, so it's, it's a wellness algae. So um, I told you when to take spirulina, which is mostly in the morning and the afternoon okay. and before sports. So with chlorella, uh, and with both of them, quite honestly, you could take them any time of day in any quantity. But at the for, okay. for sure, take your chlorella tablets at night before you go to bed okay. because your body goes through a detox and repair cycle when you're okay. sleeping. So if you have chlorella algae in your bloodstream and in your cells and in your brain why, wow. while that process is occurring naturally, you will have a better detox, you will have a faster and better repair. Uh, by the way, it also stimulates peristalsis, which is also known as uh, bowel movements, uh, mm -hmm. and elimination is a very important part of our health. So you'll have a much better one. So we encourage people to take the spirulina in the morning and the chlorella at night. Now, if you want to just take the chlorella for immune support, and by the way, it pulls out those toxins, and I, the best way I describe it is like, hey, you know, you take a shower every morning on the outside of your body. Taking chlorella is like giving your body a shower from the inside. Mm -hmm. so, um, so if you want, but if you want just some immune support, you could take five or 10 tablets a day. Uh, but if you do want the detox, you need to be taking probably closer to 20 or 30 tablets because it will not pull the toxins out um, It will uh, unless you have the 20 or 30 tablets. Now, here's the good thing. Okay. Chlorella actually tastes pretty good. Remember I said spirulina, not so much. You probably want to swallow those or throw them in a smoothie. Chlorella it tastes um, uh, very dry and uh, mm. more like a sunflower seed or a soy nut. So I eat them all day long with some, I put sea salt on them. I actually have a great uh, truffle salt <laughs> that I use. Nice. And I eat them with macadamia nuts, which of course is ketogenic, uh, yep. or almonds, and uh, or put them on a salad because uh, they have a nice crunch. They're, it's kind of a salty, garnishy flavor. So okay. now, if you can learn to like the flavor of the chlorella, you now I will say it's still very green, but if but it's, it's much better than the spirulina. Now you're having a, an evening snack, and mm. um, which will do amazing things for your health, your immune support, your um, uh, protection from viruses, from colds, and uh, still give you all the nutrients and chlorophyll yeah. that you need. Remarkable. So, so, uh, but you can swallow them too, or add them to a smoothie, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, spirulina in ask. the morning, chlorella at night. Um, try to take, for each of them, at least five or ten a day you can start with two if you want i'm, I'm all about baby steps um, mm -hmm. most of us are so nutrient deprived and we don't even know we know we're sleep deprived but right. uh, and that's easy to figure out but we don't you don't even know what it's going to be like to feel to actually give your body the nutrients it needs until you mm -hmm. start taking them um, so you know we're all about just experimenting and and um Keep in mind, there's not an upper limit. I, I'm not suggesting you do this, but I probably have 150 of these a day because I, wow. I eat them. Like, I don't have to buy them, number one. And they're a main food. Yeah. Oh, and I forgot to mention, when you take either one of them, and if you take both, even better, um, you can cut out almost all of your other vitamins. You can eliminate mm. your multivitamin, your CoQ10, your fish oil for sure and we're gonna let's mm. we'll talk about fish oil in a minute when we get back to the sea spiracy yes uh, spirulina particularly has the omega-3 so you can eliminate multivitamin coq10 fish oil magnesium potassium uh, wow. there's five right there and the spirulina because it satisfies your hunger the chlorella doesn't but the spirulina mm -hmm. satisfies your hunger you're going to eat fewer food less food your yeah. grocery bill will go down you won't be wow. have to lug stuff. Think of all the time that you're going to save from not having to cook, clean, buy, shop, you know, eat all those vegetables. You know, I love mm. vegetables, but I hardly eat them anymore because I get all my nutrients from algae. So it saves you money. It saves mm. you time. And remember, I started all this because I found out people were having too many obstacles getting the green nutrition that you need. There is no obstacle between that and that. I just had yeah. the equivalent of a plate of vegetables while I'm talking to you. 
how, wow. it doesn't now i'm not saying you have to chew them but you can but even mm -hmm. if you can just swallow them i'm gonna take another one throw it in my mouth swallow it down there, there you i go. just had another just had another plate of vegetables how easy is that your That's kids incredible. your husbands your pets great for pets pets love this stuff mm. when you're traveling again throw them in your handbag your gym bag your carry on doesn't have to be refrigerated never go bad we'd put an expiry yep. date on them but it's usually two or three years but technically they actually never go bad algae is the strangest plant because it started mm. in the ocean billions of years ago and um it never goes it never dies it yeah. will go dormant until the growing conditions continue and it will start growing again and when we dry it we air dry ours with no heat so the enzymes are all intact it literally never goes bad so you never have yeah. to worry about waste ever so it's but it's the ease it's the ease simplicity and nutrient density and safety that get that is what we all desperately need so i'm very happy that we have a solution <laughs> It seems like all of the benefits that you've just listed off, it's it's a no brainer. And it's just a matter of time where I think maybe, you know, it, we start turning the corner where people are more aware of it and they're educated about it. Um, do you feel like we're getting close to that point where people are just becoming more aware of it and starting to realize the benefits of it and just yes. kind of cascading into a new era of of this? Um, it's not really a product. It's, it's something that mother, mother nature has given us. Right. Um, but do you think we're entering into a new era of, of education around this? Com completely. And um, that, like my vision is to have a billion dollar company so that we can, you know, set up educational centers and give this mm. stuff away to disaster areas, to nursing homes, to children's lunches, to mm. teach other people around the world how to grow it. I mean, I have a very big vision, but sure. I had to start, I had to wait for people to be ready for the vision. So, um, uh, and you know, as, as terrible as COVID has been, it's done two amazing things for us, and me personally and for all of us. It's forced us to hit the pause button and yes. um, because we couldn't continue any of our lives the way they were before. And to be perfectly honest, maybe some of those things in our lives weren't contributing to our better health and wellness, yep. uh, like speed and stress. Um, yep. So what's happening is everyone's evaluating all choices. And so here's a chance for you to make a better choice, both for you and for the environment. That's number one. Number two, COVID has made us all realize, well, it's two more things, that our health is number one. Mm, and if you don't yes. have your health, you have nothing. It's, you know, Amen. being hooked up to an oxygen you know, a tank or whatever is not health <laughs> and nobody wants that. So, so we need to look after our health is now, you know, moved up from, it used to be vacations at the top and, you know, the latest, greatest, whatever clothing or sports health is now Finances. becoming at least one or two where it should always be. And it's also reminded us that we all live on the planet together and what mm. we do to the planet we do to ourselves and so this whole sustainability issue has finally started to become again as important as our own health because you know you can't trash the earth forever it's going right. to you know it will it will end up recovering but we won't so mm. we have to be more um, thoughtful in our choices about what we do with the earth so, so the time is, I think the time for algae is now for sure. And just to give you a, an example of how quickly this can grow, you know, five years ago, well, 10 years ago, nobody knew about stevia. Eight years ago, nobody knew about chia or matcha or kiwa or, mm -hmm. or hemp or CBD. And, mm -hmm. and, then, and then they, be, they became better known and distributed by entrepreneurial companies. And most recently, Collagen has really taken yep. a huge spot in the marketplace, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, five years ago or six years ago, the founder had joint problems and his daughter was in medical school and they researched the fact that as you get older, your amount of collagen in your body, in your joints, in your skin and everything deteriorate. And that was what was causing him problems. So he started uh, the, the whole collagen movement. There's a company called Vital Proteins who are... I think are like 99% responsible for helping people understand collagen. And they just got acquired last June for a valuation of a billion dollars. So they went from zero to a billion 
in like five years. That's pretty impressive as an entrepreneur. But here's the thing. Uh, collagen is not sustainable. It's made from crushed up animal and fish bones, number one. Mm. So if you're vegan, you know, you're out of luck and it's certainly not helping the, the sustainability issue. Number yep. two, algae has virtually exactly the same amount of protein slash collagen as collagen powder. Plus it has all that rich chlorophyll. It has 40 other vitamins and minerals that you don't get from, from collagen. So wow. algae is like collagen on steroids, except it's mm. sustainable and uh, healthier and gives you way more um, benefits. So if you are aware of collagen, just up your game a little bit and take algae instead. And you know, no, no you disrespect to collagen or vital proteins. I have a lot of respect for vital proteins. I'm so grateful to them. Um, they've helped educated people about the you know, importance. That you'll see ingestibles starting to become big because they're not supplements, they're food. They're fun what's called mm. functional food that you eat. Um, you know, there's gummies and all that sort of stuff. Um, but you'll also, you have to look under the hood because a lot of these ingestibles have sugar in them and they're not much better than the supplements, which tend to be fake and made in factories. Algae, remember, algae is a food crop. It is, mm -hmm. and we are well known for having the highest quality because we grow it in triple filtered spring mountain water. We do not use high heat to dry it. So all the enzymes are intact and we don't add anything to it. No binders, no fillers, nothing. That's why love doctors it. love us and sell us. So, yeah. um, so algae, algae is about to be discovered. I was 11 years ahead of the rest of the world, but it gave me time to get all my science straight. And uh, so I can be a good educator. At heart, I'm truly just an educator. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel a responsibility to share all this great knowledge about algae because Mother Nature doesn't have a voice um, on the newscasts or the ocean doesn't either. So some, some of us need to step up and, and um, be the voice for, for our good friend Mother Nature. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think what you're doing, uh, the approach you're taking is the right way, is getting out to as many people as you can, getting on to podcasts like mine, um, and just get the word out as much as possible because so many people are just unaware of all of the benefits, myself included. Um, prior to you and, and your team approaching me, I, I really didn't know much about algae and, and all of the benefits that it has. And now, as I'm doing more research and, and research in preparation for our conversation, um, I, I'm, a, I'm a believer in it. I'm really getting excited about, um, about this product, where it can go, what it can do for our world and, and for other people. Um, and while we're talking about the idea of sustainability, we've talked about sea spiracy. Um, what are some of the other kind of big takeaways that maybe we haven't talked about in terms of um, what we learned in that documentary and how algae might be the right solution for us? Yeah, well, um, oh man, please watch uh, Sea Spiracy, S-E-A, mm. Sea Spiracy, can spell it right, it's Netflix, it's their number yep. one movie right now. Um, so uh, they pointed a number of things, uh, all of which is well documented. The, you know, there's been this recent last 10 years concern about, you know, plastic straws um, right. damaging the ocean. But the reality is that that's like 0.001% of the plastic that's in the ocean. The vast majority of the plastics are coming from the discarded fishing nets, yep. which not only damage the ocean, but they, the poor animals, the dolphins and the whales get wrapped up in it and they eat it and um, they wash up on shore dead. So, um, you know, yes, continue doing your part with the plastic straws, but be aware it's a much bigger issue uh, here and it's mm -hmm. the fishing nets. Um, yeah. The other thing with the fishing nets is that uh, the dolphins and the whales get caught of it, caught in them while they are being used for fishing, uh, which causes even more deaths of those animals. They, there's something called trawling, where they drag this thing across the ocean floor to try to catch whatever animals they can, and in the process, they just it, it's like raping the earth, and they just kill all the. Um, the uh, coral and anything that's it's just like turns it into the equivalent of a desert um mm. 
The other thing is, you know, things like, uh, you know, I was aware of this, but it made me even more aware. You know, salmon, a lot of these, well, all the salmon that's caught, unless it's wild Alaskan, all the salmon that's farmed, including in Scotland, isn't, does, isn't pink. They add dyes to it. So it looks more attractive. Uh, so and there and there's these organizations that claim to be you know protecting the wildlife in the oceans, but they aren't. It's a big scam, and it's all the mm. big corporations that are paying for these sea-worthy stickers on their you know um, dolphin-free netting, and it's not true. So, so in the movie, they point out that you know we just can't continue. The, we're just we're not going to have any fish left. Period. If we continue at this rate, the, the oceans will be so damaged and it's all connected. Like the, if you lose all these whales and you lose all these dolphins, then um, then the other uh, the other medium sized f fish over accumulate, which cause other dis imbalances in the ocean. I mean, the ecosystem mm -hmm. is called eco because it's got to be one each level uh, creates the sustainable um, environment. And so if you take one layer off, the entire thing gets thrown off. Exactly. So uh, eating less fish is their, less or no fish is their solution for now until the government step up and actually start protecting the oceans. I'm not saying that maybe you have to stop eating fish forever, but it mm -hmm. might be a way to deliver a message to the fishing industry that this is no longer acceptable. And so I support that, um, yep. either no or less seafood. Number two, they, they, obviously we need a, you know, something else to get us the protein or some of the benefits of fish, which are omega-3, which I talked about briefly. And mm -hmm. algae is being used for, for that. And they even the movies say, you know, algae is a much safer source of protein. First of all, it's harvested in fresh water has three times the amount of protein as fish or steak. So you get very high concentrations of protein, no need to, or, or eat, eat seafood that's made from algae. <laughs> right. you know, there's a lot of that going on. And the other thing, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, they talk about fish oil. I think you have to have like, I don't know what the quantity of fish to get one little capsule of fish oil. You have to have a couple of fish, which seems so doesn't the math doesn't work for me. Um, yep. But where do you think the fish get the omega three from? They don't make from it themselves. The they they eat the algae, and the algae yep. has the omega three in it. Now, fish oil. If you don't want to, if you don't really care about the oceans, although I certainly hope you do, uh, I need to point out that they've done tests and that virtually all fish oil goes rancid after a month. So people are taking fish oil to reduce inflammation, and now it's causing inflammation. The better source of omega-3, hands down, is algae, spirulina algae, which has a very high amount of omega-3, has other essential fatty acids like GLA. Um, it will never go rancid. It never goes bad. It's sustainable. Uh, so it's a much safer source of, of omega-3 every single time. You just you, There's no comparison. And on top yeah. of that, when you harvest algae um, for whatever reason, the protein, the omega-3, keep in mind that it's because it's grown in fresh water, it can grow anywhere. We're not going to take over any land or um, that's already being used for other crops. You can grow it in the desert if, you, if it's the right temperature and you have a clean water source. So that's number one. Number two, when you grow corn or wheat, which are both acidic, non Con, con, contribute virtually no nutrient value to your body or to your health. In addition to that, you only get one crop a year. Well, mm. with algae, because it only takes about a month to grow and then about you know, a month to dry and package, you get like anywhere from six to ten crops of algae a year. So it's much more efficient farming, which is why, by the way, drum roll, the United States government, the White House and the Senate passed the very first Algae Agricultural Act in 19, 2019 as part of the Farm Bill because they have mm. realized how, how nutrient dense and sustainable algae is and virtually all of it is grown in Asia, China, Japan, India, Taiwan, we grow ours in Taiwan, which is world standard. So even the government in the United States has recognized that algae is a food crop and it mm. needs to be grown here. You get 200 yeah. times more protein per acre 
from algae than you do animal crops. It uses a 20% less water. And by the way, the water can be reused because algae yeah. kills bacteria. In fact, you may not know this, but algae is used at virtually every single water treatment plant in North America, probably the world wow. too, because it kills bacteria. So, um, and it releases oxygen. People think the Amazon rainforests are, are responsible for our oxygen. Nope, it's algae. 80% of the oxygen on earth has always come from algae, uh, algae wow. in the ocean, algae from harvesting. So it um, doesn't matter how you look at algae, it's, it's the answer. And so mm. it's taken me a long time for people to finally start listening to me. I've had the science um, <laughs> and it's now being used in so many ways. There's a, there's a company that's um, like Reebok, for example, just launched a running shoe last year, uh, made completely of plants and the wow. liner is completely made of algae because it kills bacteria, so it makes sense. Uh, there's a food, uh, clothing company called Gore-Tex that launched an entire clothing line last year made of mm. algae because it is the most sustainable crop and they want to you know, uh, do their part. Uh, even H&M is using uh, algae in, in uh, food, in uh, clothing construction. Uh, a big company called, um, uh, I'm sure I'm blanking on the name right now, but they've made uh, a um, algae, they're using um, algae as for plastics. So they're making mm. water bottles and condiment containers made of algae. So. You can eat your water bottle after you drink your water, or, or wow. if you choose not to, you, uh, it will decompose in 24 days uh, compared to plastics, which might be 24 centuries or something like this, some ridiculous amount. Um, so, so it's not just me. Uh, if you aren't, most people just don't know about algae. It's this whole literally undercurrent world <laughs> yes. uh, that there's, there's uh, surfboards that are made of algae. There's all kinds of food that's made of algae and um you're going to start algae is going to change the world it's there's yes. i don't know how else to tell you so you might as well it's start remarkable. learning about it now <laughs> yeah well that's why i'm so happy to have you on the show is is to educate me and to educate my audience um I, like i said just the, the list of benefits not only for ourselves but for our planet uh it's remarkable and children and, uh, and for the children, yes, I, I'm a huge fan and, and believer in the idea that the health of ourselves as human beings is dependent on the health of our air, our soil, our oceans and water and, and our food. And it sounds like everything you've shared with us today, uh, that algae really is the answer for so many of these, these issues that we're facing. Yeah, and I'll just throw a couple more at you. And I, you know, a lot of people beat up on the, um, the you know, the animal harvesting or cropping or whatever. Uh, and I don't want to come down either way on on that. But we do need to treat the animals better. And mm -hmm. one of the big problems with um, animals, you know, is that you know they documented that cow farts. Sorry for the you know split yeah. up. Um, are the largest uh, contributor to methane and yep. carbon dioxide. Well, there's this, and we wrote a blog about this, so come to our our website, energybits.com, and visit our blog, because we have links to all these studies. They did mm. a study where they fed the cattle, they put an algae in their feed. Wow. Got rid of 99% of the cow farts. No methane. Holy cow. No, st like, holy cow. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no pun intended. To, yeah. <laughs> So the cows were happy. They don't, you know, who wants gassy stomachs? I mean, you know what it feels like to have a gassy stomach. Well, the cows right. feel the same way. They're not happy. You put algae in their in their feed, boom, problem resolved. So Incredible. you don't necessarily have to stop, you know, the whole cattle sure. industry because there is some regenerative benefits to, but you have to treat them properly and you have to feed them right. properly. And right. a similar example, a lot of countries, I read, a, I saw a documentary, gosh, about five years ago, PBS documentary about fish farming. Mm -hmm. And what they do with fish farming is they have this, it's usually slightly offshore of some land uh, and they have this huge netted area where they, you know, have, keep the, the fish contained as they grow. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the countries were starting to decline having fish farms because again the fish were pooping and it was acidic and the yep. acidity was killing the um the, uh, the life in the ocean and it was washing up on shore and killing all the 
the, the vegetation on shore. Mm -hmm. So what did they do? Started feeding the fish algae. Wow. Problem, problem gone. Neutral poop. <laughs> Incredible. It's unbelievable. You've, you've covered so much, Catherine, um, on benefits. I would like to touch, um, also you mentioned, you know, some of the beauty aspects of, of better skin and hair. Um, maybe you can touch a little bit more on, on some of the, the benefits of, of beauty, fitness, um, things of that nature, and then any other kinds of, of benefits that we, or any kind of info on algae that maybe yeah. we haven't covered yet. Well, I'm glad. Thank you for raising the, the, the beauty. So as I mentioned, we do have a brand called Beauty Bits. And the reason why there are two, because it's spirulina, it's two, energy, two um, spirulina energy bits and beauty bits are exactly the same, is because, mm -hmm. you know, I started this whole, the company, well, I wasn't planning on starting a company. I just wanted to help my sister, but mm -hmm. uh, which led to having a company. Um, so women's health has always been a very big priority for me. And we found that women weren't attracted to the, <laughs> the blue packaging. So my girlfriend said, you got to make it pink and give it a cute name. And so because spirulina also builds your skin and hair, and how does it do that? Well, a number of ways, and also the, sort of the chlorella. As you age, as I mentioned, and this is why the, vitamin, the uh, vital proteins in the collagen company discovered, as you age, your body produces less collagen. And mm -hmm. so collagen... Uh, when it comes to your skin, think of it as, as sort of like the filler. It keeps, it keeps, um, it retains um, moisture, and it it can it gives you the bulk in your skin. But if you're mm -hmm. as you as you age, that ability to generate it decreases. Well, the spirulina is has the highest concentration of protein in the world, and all the proteins and amino acids, which is what makes the collagen. So it instantly, well, not instantly, it does. Uh, allow your skin to start to be healthy again and um, and gr and and uh, build its own collagen. Now, it doesn't happen overnight because all of your body parts, including your skin, have different growth cycles. Um, I think your stomach lining actually um, replaces itself every 48 hours, but your skin takes 27 days. Organs sometimes take eight years. Mm. Um, that's why if you have liver disease, it may be eight years before you're completely clear. So for your skin, it's going to take, you know, at least that length of time to start seeing some kind of improvement. Um, and, you know, since this is visual and since I want you to understand that this really works, like I'm almost 65 years old and I don't have any noticeable wrinkles. And mm -hmm. I attribute it to the algae because I take so much of it every day. So, yeah. so that's number one is it builds your collagen. By the way, your hair is also made of... Um, um, protein it's 98 percent protein so the so the collagen slash protein in the in the spirulina both algae actually build not mm -hmm. only your skin but also your hair and your nails um, it also um, now there's also this thing in your skin called elastin um, think of elastin as the scaffolding that holds your skin up and then inside is all the collagen so mm -hmm. that elastin can get damaged by free radicals um, and also by excess calcium. Now, um, the algae has the highest concentration of, of antioxidants, which get rid of the um, free radicals, so that helps protect your elastin. And mm -hmm. also this issue with calcium. You know, we all take calcium supplements, and we take D3 to improve the absorption of calcium, but too much calcium is not good for you because what it does is it, it causes damage, and we can talk about the blood vessel, but what it does is it attacks your elastin. So then your elastin, which is that scaffolding, starts to collapse, and that leads to wrinkles. Mm -hmm. So the the both algae, but particularly the chlorella, which we call recovery bits, but both of them have something called vitamin K2 in it. And vitamin K2 is the only thing that can pull out excess calcium wherever it is and move it into your bones. So at the same mm -hmm. time, it's helping to prevent osteoporosis, which is a very big problem for women as we get older. Now, why does K2 do this? And why does almost everybody have a deficit in vitamin K2? Well, mm -hmm. K2 is related to K1. You may know about K1. K1 is what's in anything that's green. But here's, but you can eat a room full of, K, of kale or anything green and you won't get a drop of K2 because we don't have the bacteria in us that converts K1 to K2, but animals do. Mm -hmm. So up until the 60s or 70s, Animals were grazing on pastures and eating grass. 
And they have this bacteria that converts K1 into K2. So when we were eating grass-fed animal protein, we were getting K2. But then in the 70s, early 70s, the farmers realized that if they fed the animals corn and put them in closures, they would get fat faster and they would make more money. Overnight, the, the supply of vitamin K2 in our diet disappeared. And that's exactly when heart disease started escalating because too much calcium, they're realizing half of heart disease is because there's too much calcium in your blood vessels because it gathers wow. in soft tissue. Soft tissue is your brain, that's, mm -hmm. so it's also contributing to Alzheimer's, wrinkles in your skin, your blood vessels, so, uh, and, and kidney stones, guess what kidney stones are? Calcification, okay? Yeah. So, wow. so the K2, for what it has two proteins that are that it stimulates and it moves that excess calcium out of your blood vessels because when your blood vessels when you have arteriosclerosis that's hardening of the arteries mm -hmm. guess what's hardening calcium yep. <laughs> so the k2 moves it out of the blood vessels moves it out of your skin gets rid of the the, the kidney stones and moves all that calcium into your bones which is where it wow. should be or your teeth and um osteoporosis is actually the where your bones start to have holes in them and, and uh, you need that's it, it, it's where the calcium should be stored so um, so the, the you know the, the both the algae both the spirulina and the chlorella help with that process of removing excess calcium to protect your elastin and also to build your collagen um, wow. and the free radicals rem, um, the, um, that are damaging everything are eliminated because of the antioxidants uh, spirulina has the highest uh, what's called ORAC radi rating. I think it's like 10,000 times higher than cherries or something. Um, hmm. And also it's alkaline. You know, when you have blemishes, it's because there's too much acidity. Uh, uh, and so the bacteria gather wherever there's acidity. And so because, and this is what started me on this whole process, remember with my sister's oncologist saying she should eat yep. an alkaline diet. Um, when you have more lower, P, uh, you have an alkaline pH, especially in your skin, bacteria mm -hmm. cannot live. So it helps remove blemishes as well. Wow. So interesting. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating. You know, I, I couldn't, you know, when I first started doing this and I was for two years, I read all this research. And I thought this can't be possible because <laughs> if it's so amazing, why doesn't, why don't people know about it? And, and um, it's because literally there's almost too much science and scientists like to talk to other scientists because they have jargon and they, and they don't know how to speak, speak to us mere mortals. And so I, right. I've realized the fact that I didn't come from a scientific background, I don't have a PhD, although I certainly feel like I do, um, <laughs> has made it easy for me to interpret the science uh, and be able to speak to consumers and help them understand what, yes. what's really going on. But on the other hand, because I have so much science now, I can go toe to toe with any scientist or any doctor and yep. explain the medical reasons why this stuff works. So I, I can go it. both sides. <laughs> well, I, I think that's why this has been such an enjoyable conversation is because it's very relatable. Um, you don't necessarily talk in uh, super sciencey terms. You certainly put out the science there, but you don't talk in, in language that people uh, think it might be foreign and they can't even understand it. Um, and I appreciate that because it, it brings it down to a level where people can say, okay, these are the benefits. This is what I get out of it. Um, and, and let's give it a try rather yeah. than just listing off, uh, you know, tons and tons of, of jargon, like you said, um, and it tends to turn people off. So I appreciate uh, your approach there. I also appreciate the fact that you don't have, you know, you don't come from that science background and have a PhD. I, I don't either. I, I don't have uh, that scientific background or, um, you know, any kind of uh, PhD or doctorate or anything like that. But I enjoyed learning and, um, and you're doing a great job of that is, is teaching people. So, so thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah. Catherine, before I get to my, my last question, uh, you mentioned your website. Is it energybits.com? Yes. And, and where can uh, people find more about you? Sure. And so energy, E-N-E-R-G-Y-B-I-T-S dot com. And uh, we sell all the, um, the products there. As I mentioned, there's two versions of spirulina. There's the energy bits and the beauty bits. Um, mm -hmm. The chlorella is the one called recovery bits because it helps you with your health. And we actually have a fourth brand called Vitality Bits, which is a blend of the two algae. 
Um, now we have a 20% discount code that we want to share with your community. Uh, so when you get onto the shopping cart, you'll see a sh coupon box and just type in the word Dan Voss, D-A-N-V-O-S-S, -S, all one word, and you'll get 20% off whatever you purchase. It, it, and it lasts forever, so don't panic. Uh, now, if you're not ready for a full bag, and I don't want people to have sticker shock, but I'm just going to remind you again of that quote from NASA that says one gram of algae has the same nutrition as 1,000 grams of vegetables. So mm -hmm. I did the math and figured out that one bag of our algae, which normally is $120, which with the discount brings it down to 96 one bag mm -hmm. has the same nutrition as 551 pounds of vegetables. Wow. So that's 555, 551 pounds of vegetables you didn't have to carry home, you didn't have to clean, cook, or eat. So that's why I call it efficient nutrition. Um, mm. So come and visit us at energybits.com. If you um, you can also buy a sample pack that has four single servings um, of the different one of each of the different brands, uh, nice. or we're also sold on um, on Amazon where you can buy single servings for four dollars. And then once you've felt comfortable, come back to the the website energybits.com um, and and um, buy the larger bag with the discount code. And we're also very active on social media. So uh, f Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, we do a lot of contests on Instagram. Uh, mm -hmm. Our handle is at energybits, so it's pretty easy. We also have an Instagram handle for beauty bits, um, so that's, that's kind of fun. But um, I, I guess my parting sort of words of wisdom, too, would be, look at, you have to have, you, to be healthy, you need to give your body what it needs and you have to get rid of the things it doesn't. And mm -hmm. we're all busy and we want, this, we want simple solutions that are proven. That's algae. It doesn't get any easier. Just open your mouth, put two, five, 10, 20, doesn't matter. Swallow them and you have instantly, instantly given your body what it needs and you're getting rid of what it doesn't. And at the same mm -hmm. time, you are helping the sustainability of our Earth. I mean, this is the month of Earth. This Earth Day is in April, yep. um, and we're all connected. So self-care and Earth care, to me, are the same, mm -hmm. certainly when it comes to algae. So give it a try. You, it, you, it replaces a lot of other things that you are taking that probably aren't working. You can reduce doctor's visits, prescriptions, mm -hmm. uh, yep. supplements, groceries <laughs> yes it's incredible uh, so it's just the fastest easiest purest documented historically used solution and i'm just proud to tell you about it <laughs> that's great i was just about to ask you as my last question is who do you want to impact the most uh with the work that you're doing i think you maybe have answered that but you know you have the story of of your sister you know fighting cancer um you've helped so many other people you know as they become more aware of, of algae and all of its benefits. Um, but is there anybody else, uh, you know, you can directly speak to um, that you want to impact the most with the work that you're doing with Energy Bits? Well, um, yeah, it's hard to identify somebody I don't want to affect. You know, older people um, tend to have a greater need because as you age, your systems just don't work as well and you don't have mm -hmm. as much collagen, you don't have as much energy, you don't have as many mitochondria, you don't have as, yep. everything is deteriorating. So if you're over 50 or 60, man, you need this big time because it mm -hmm. will help get you back into balance and give you back your energy and mental acuity that you had when you were younger. On the other hand, I'm so interested in appealing to the millennial and Gen Z crowd because they are the ones that are actively making change in our world, who are t you know, seeking new answers that are sustainable and, and, and truthful um, with a soul. And um, I know that they're our future for you know, bringing change to the rest of the world. Um, mm -hmm. And I also just want to approach moms because I know how busy moms are and how many demands there are. And it, you know, arguing with your children to get them to eat your vegetables it's got to be tiring. And so mm -hmm. don't worry anymore, mothers. Just give them a few of these every day and this problem solved. Uh, mm -hmm. Brain health, physical health, immune health, um, and make it, make it fun for them. The kids like to chew them because it turns, turns their tongue screen. <laughs> so, uh, and I can't let out, forget our pets. 
because our pets are members of our families too. And you will find your cats or dogs love this stuff and you know they're smarter than us <laughs> yeah so uh, they'll have so they have great. the same health issues um there is nobody that can't benefit from this and so i just want to get more of it out there um so that people can enjoy it <laughs> that's incredible i uh i have a, a dog of my own she's a puppy still she's got tons of energy so <laughs> if i'm going to be uh sharing these with her i think i'll probably start off with the uh, chlorella to maybe help uh, aid her, her sleep a little bit and some yeah. of the other benefits that you mentioned um i'm not sure if she needs any more energy at this point but uh, <laughs> as, as she gets older i'll work her into the to the energy bits um great. catherine this was so great such a incredible conversation i learned so much about about algae um and the work you're doing is is truly remarkable i think we are um, at the beginning stages, I mean, it probably doesn't feel like beginning stages of you for you because you've been doing this for <laughs> over a decade. But in terms of public awareness, I think we're about to turn the corner here for, yeah. for LG and, and uh, you'll have your, your spotlight. So, Catherine, thank you again. And thank uh, you. I hope, thank I you, hope for you have your a great work. day. All right. You yes. too. <laughs> we're so we're a team. Teamwork That's makes right. the dream work. <laughs> That's right. Appreciate you. Have a great day. All right. You too.